Well, hello again. Glad you could be with me. Pastor Ray Barnett here on God's Answers for Anxiety and Depression. As always, I wish all of you a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, depending on what time you're watching this broadcast. Today, I'm in a rather unusual spot, <clears throat> though the nice bulrushes or whatever these plants are behind me make a nice scenery, I hope. At least I think. I'm in the parking lot of my doctor's office where I have an appointment in just about uh, 20 minutes. So this broadcast, uh, this lesson will be a little bit shorter, not much. And I figure this was a good opportunity. Uh, as some of you may know, I don't know what state, you know, what your state requires or the county that you're in, in your state. But here we have to pull up into the parking lot. We have to call on our cell phone to alert the office that we're here. We must be masked. And uh, the nurses come out, take your temperature, and they escort you inside the building. It's quite the... Um, Quite the protocol. But such are the times in which we live. You see, this is a good example of something that I've told you before, which is that when life presents us with situations that are either inconvenient or not uh, to our liking, we have got to improvise, then we must adapt, and then we overcome. So I decided to put a little of that into practice here, sitting in the parking lot and uh, waiting for my, my appointment with my doctor, who is a Christian, and he's been not only my doctor, but a family friend, oh, for about 30 years. Okay, if I didn't tell you all that, you wouldn't have known any, any better, right? Now, yesterday when I left you, during the lesson, and then at the end of the lesson, I, I gave you an assignment that assignment was to pick a thought, any thought, and uh, a happy thought, and concentrate on it. Then I told you to reverse the process and pick a, a sad thought, maybe the saddest thought you could think of. Maybe, maybe that wouldn't be altogether happy, uh, too healthy for you, I don't know. But you pick a sad thought, <clears throat> And the idea was to observe, if you could, see how your body responds to these two extremes, a very happy thought or a, a sad thought. Now, if you didn't do the assignment, I am going to exhort you to, to get that done, to do that. You could do it right now, if you want. Just pause the, uh, the lesson. And just take time, <clears throat> and take your time, since this is already pre-recorded, I'm not going anywhere. You can take your time, you know, a couple few minutes on each one. Very happy thought, pleasant thought. Switch over, try an, an unhappy thought, sad thought. And see if you could, uh, f well, feel is a good word, sense is a better word. Discover um, what your body does when you use this little uh, technique. All right, now this is related to the verse that I have for you. So once again, if you are not coming to these um, studies, these lessons with a Bible, then just pause again, pause the uh, broadcast and um, all right, go get your Bible. We are in Isaiah 26, verse 3 and 4, and it says this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord Jehovah, for in the Lord there is everlasting strength. 
Now, I didn't get to accent that last portion of verse 4. In fact, we never got to verse 4 at all. But think about the fact that God has no limitations. We talked about that last week. No limitations whatsoever. I mean, absolutely none. There's nothing too difficult, nothing uh, impossible. There is no place in the entire universe where God is not, right? He's omnipresent. It's one of his attributes. There's nothing going on in the entire universe that God does not know about, all right? He's omniscient, all-knowing. And so much so that Jesus will say that even the very hairs of our head are all numbered. If you think and take the time to meditate on these type of verses, and by the way, meditation in Scripture is not just reading your devo during your devotional time and reading the Bible, but actually just taking a period of time, what I call the lost art of contemplation and meditation, to just be quiet. And obviously you should find a quiet place. Your house may be adequate and maybe not, depending on your circumstances. But just to be able to sit and to really think through each word of a scripture, or scriptures plural, is where you're going to get the most benefit from them. So with that having been said, Isaiah 26, 3 is where we left off. Thou, God, will keep you in a state of perfect peace when or if your mind is fixed on him. Now, I shared with you yesterday, which I, I also told you was part of my message on a Sunday, which again, if you want to, if you want to watch it, is uh, on the Time for Truth Ministries channel. Right here on YouTube, I have two channels. Time for Truth Ministries, those are my sermons. And uh, God's Answers for Anxiety and Depression, that's the channel that you're on right now. And um, in that message, I stated to the people and everybody who was listening and watching, and also these, these messages go on the radio too, not these here, but all the rest from the, from the pulpit. They go all over the several radio stations that I've been on for 33 years. And I, I said to the people, think about it this way, the, the, the possibility, the possibility exists. Now I make it to, directly to you. The possibility exists that you can be free from all of your fears, all of your anxieties, all your depression, if you will keep your mind focused, constantly focused on God, specifically Jesus Christ. And I say specifically because we, we see God became a man. All right, John chapter 1, Gospel according to John chapter 1. And um, when we look at Jesus and we see, you know, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So it gets a little bit more it gets a little easier to uh, take God into a, a macrocosm, something that you can see. And you read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and then the epistles. And we see, well, of course, the Revelation as well, the last book of the Bible. And we get a, an accurate picture. And if you keep your mind stayed on God, on Jesus Christ, the promise, and remember I told you yesterday that God cannot lie. Therefore, he cannot make a promise that he's not willing to keep. But the condition is then, the onus then becomes on us, if we will keep our minds stayed on him. I also told you that this is not, easy, uh, to, uh, this is not an easy habit to develop and to perfect but it can be done. And so I, I think I'd like to share with you that the onus is on you, yes. 
But how much of that possibility do you actually believe? Psalm 34.4, which was part of last week's teaching, I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Doesn't mean that David didn't have temptation to fear from that point onward. Again, you could watch the message. That was my text for Sunday on the Time for Truth Ministries channel, if you're interested. But it doesn't mean that David wasn't again challenged in his life, just like you and I are going to be, but it means that we can overcome. And the more that we practice keeping our minds fixed on God, 24 hours, well, <laughs> maybe difficult when you're sleeping, but it's not all that easy when you're awake. We have things to do, we have business to conduct. And I said, I, I said to you yesterday, what you do when you realize, I'm not thinking about the Lord, I'm not thinking about His Word, I'm not thinking about His promises, and for that matter, Bible prophecy and other things, then you just gently bring your mind back to position itself on the nature and existence and all the promises and so forth that God has made in the Bible. And then this one promise that we're accenting, I'm accenting today, is the fact that God promises to keep that person, let's, let me say it's you, He promises you to keep you in a state of perfect peace as your mind just stayed on Him. Now, one of the things that goes along with this experiment, the happy thought, the sad thought, is to see what you're experiencing in your body, if, if you're able to. And if, if not, don't, don't strain. Don't strain. That won't be helpful. But you will, as I mentioned yesterday, I believe it was yesterday, one day be able to come to a point and say, wow, a whole day went by and I wasn't depressed. And I wasn't anxious. I didn't have a panic attack. Then two days, three, a week, a month, six months. By the time I think that you are six months free from symptoms, you're well on your way, if not having already crossed over to a cure. But this takes time and a ton of patience. Remember, I've talked to you several times about setbacks. They come. They're going to come. I have them all the time. Uh, the difference being is that I've trained myself in the very principles I'm giving to you. So I'm, I'm way ahead of you by decades and decades. And you're just starting out, uh, most of you. And so you, you want to be very diligent in your practice of steadying the mind on God. Think about when you watch the news, especially today. And um, if you like politics, I don't particularly care for politics. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm certainly a patriot and certainly up on what's going on. But I have limited confidence in man. But I have absolute confidence in God. And that's where you want to be, to be informed, to be dutiful, to uh, perform your responsibilities as an American citizen, as a citizen of our country, and as your husband, wife, father, and, and so on, at work, wherever you have responsibilities. But the mind has got to be fixed on God all the time. So that's what the goal you're, you're going to be working on. So with the little experiment that I gave you, it's just to show you if, you if you were able to pick up on response in your body. And try it again and again a few times. If you don't, just don't strain. Just do, do it easy. And um, if you can start to say, gee, when I'm thinking of the happy thought, my stomach is at rest, my heart rate goes down, my, my headache maybe is better. And when you go over to the, um, the bad thoughts, the sad thoughts, you should be able to pick up on your body's response. And by the way, one of the difficulties with this for you is that now the body, uh, the body and the brain, well, let's, let's accent the brain. The brain has built up a habit of dwelling 
-hmm. and uh, on you know your situation what's going on in your life and you're dwelling on it okay it ap actually establishes the point that I'm trying to make Marcus Aurelius the um, Roman Emperor and philosopher once stated that a man's life woman's life are what his thoughts make of it so when you're fixated over here on that trauma that tragedy the series of events that made you depressed or make you anxious or both your mind is becoming more and more um, what's the word I'm looking? you're being fashioned into that you're being fashioned formed into that mindset and then habits habits are being uh, formed and so on the the heart the lungs the stomach all of the above are being habituated by the dwelling on this one thing now we start to build up a habit of thinking on God his promises and, and more than that I didn't mention this yesterday when you begin to see his promises coming to pass in your life that's when it really gets exciting when you start to see that God cannot fail he will always provide but the condition once again is faith unwavering faith but let's just uh, suppose that you've met the condition and you start to see like little raindrops you know right before a down downpour and these little raindrops are appearing and you see the promises of God starting to come to pass that's an indication there's more to come and in your case there is more um, peace to come more security to come more confidence to come more health to come more good things and specifically with our topic at hand more of the deliverance from the oppressions depressions panic anxiety sweaty palms sweaty arms and and all these hundreds of symptoms that go along with these these uh, maladies more to come so as we we begin to establish a new habit which is to dwell on God and I recommend that book in case you missed just today's broadcast the practice of the presence of God written by a brother Lawrence hundreds of years ago uh, very good book very thin very easy to read but lots of practical advice on the very subject that I'm talking about right now so when it comes to uh, practicing the presence of God what you're doing is you're fixing your mind on the scriptures and you're fixing your mind on what God has said and who he is and this is going to begin or be the beginning of what you are really looking for all right 18 minutes into the broadcast and I'm being summoned by the nursing staff <laughs> to get myself inside so quickly pray for you in fact I'll pray for you when the broadcast ends today and then I will um, follow up with this more than likely tomorrow okay so thanks for being with me and remember to practice the good thought the bad thought also the goal is to keep your mind stayed on him I'll see you tomorrow God bless thanks for being with me